This video is made available by the Allegheny College Computer Science Department under an attribution, non-commercial, no derivative works version 3.0 license. In this video, we're going to finish up the DC power subsystem of the Freeduino. We're going to add two 100 nanofarad capacitors, which take the wiggle out of the output of the voltage regulator. We'll add a diode, a 47 microfarad capacitor, the voltage regulator, the 7805, and our DC power jack. First, I'll add the two capacitors. As before, I need to create a Z-bend in the leg to get them to fit the board. And then, I heat the leg in the pad, applying solder. Next, I'm going to insert the 47 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. Electrolytic capacitors have a positive and a negative side. They are polarized. If you insert them backwards, you will burn out the capacitor and ruin your board. You can tell which side is negative because it has a gray stripe and it is the shorter leg. The gray stripe is probably what you should trust, just in case the legs have become mangled in some way. To insert the capacitor into the board, I gently pushed it through, having slightly widened both of the legs, so it formed a tight fit on the board. Do this gently, but it will provide a nice snug fit up against the board. That's what you want when you try and insert these components. Repeat this procedure with the 100 microfarad capacitor. Slightly widen the legs, gently push down till you have a tight fit, bend the legs over, and solder. To affix the voltage regulator, you're going to have to use a two pairs of pliers to very carefully bend the pins at the right location so it fits the board. Now I've again used a piece of tape to hold the component in place. This is largely because I'm using my helping hands to hold the PCB so that it can be filmed. You might use your helping hands to hold the component in place, or you might find a partner who's willing to work with you. Heat the legs and the pads and apply solder. Try not to jump or across them, however. Lastly, I'm going to attach the DC barrel jack connector. Notice how large the pins are and how large the holes are for this particular piece. For this component, you're going to need to heat the legs just a bit more while maintaining contact with the pad. You want both the leg and the pad to be quite warm when you start to flow solder into the joint. The reason these are so large is because this is a high stress part. Therefore, the solder is not only providing an electrical connection, but also anchoring the component to the board. You can see with this first leg, that I've actually nudged the component. That's because the tape wasn't adequate to hold it in place. This becomes problematic later. My DC jack is no longer seated smoothly against the board. I have good electrical contact, but the component is lifted off the PCB in a way that I find both unattractive and potentially unstable in the long run. You could either use your helping hands to help make sure the component is in place, do a better job of affixing it, or perhaps even use a small drop of hot glue under the jack and make sure that the component is first firmly affixed in place before you begin soldering. Notice how I flow solder in around the entire pin, and I make sure that it is well affixed. Here you can see the DC jack is lifted up off the board. I can't easily get it seated down without unsoldering all three legs. Hopefully you can do better.